What's going on guys, Styx here at the Token Minorities, bringing you the game for week 2 of Season 6 of the CPC, up against Moxie Infernape and his Baltimore Braviary. And before I get into the game, just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, helps us out a ton, and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys. Now, quick overview of the team that I am bringing this week. If you did not check the team builder, it will be linked in the description below. I highly encourage you to check that out before you watch this battle to see what mons I'm bringing, the EV spreads, the moves, etc, etc, just so you can understand why I'm making some of the plays that I am making. But just a quick run through, we have a Kebia Roos Tapu Koko for the Thunderous, a Spex Gengar, which absolutely destroys his team, a mixed defensive Necrozma just to be able to take on Mega Medicham, but also some emergency hits from things like Reuniclus and Thunderous if need be, a Spideff Rindo Swampert for having one switch in into Thunderous to get my rocks up just because really all I need to do is, ju is just get rocks up so that I can limit how many times Thunderous is able to come in and just get a little bit of chip damage off. A modest Hurricane spamming Mega Pidgeot just absolutely does work against his team. And then a Scarf Buzzle as a pseudo check to Garchomp and then just something to outspeed and KO a lot of mons on his team. So yeah, uh, that's that's the team that I am bringing. Looking at his team, I'm noticing that he did not bring either of the steals. Heatran, I really wasn't thinking he would bring as literally everything on my team apart from Tapu Koko is able to very easily carry very strong ground coverage. Even Mega Pidgeot is able to carry a modest HP ground, which does a ton to Heatran. So I didn't think Heatran would come, but one thing I am very relieved to not see is the Clef Key because that thing was so annoying to deal with in a couple mocks just because I mean that thing has like magnet rise it has priority screens just super annoying to try to deal with so I'm glad I don't have to deal with that now and then finally we don't see the Floatzel so that was kind of a well Floatzel was more of an unexpected threat in mocks and then also in theory just because I mean I would see it and I'd be like well uh this is unfortunate um <laughs> so i'm very glad to see that floatzel is not there but apart from that it's pretty much exactly what i expected he brought the alolan marowak more than likely a tapu coco counter just because lightning round its typing lends itself to being able to take on tapu coco very well thunderous uh thinking that it's some sort of offensive thunderous potentially even a Scarfed Thunderous, which was brought in one of the mocks, as otherwise I do have two Mons that outspeed his entire team just naturally in my Tapu Koko and Mega Pidge, and then any Scarfers that I wanted to bring would also be able to outspeed his team very easily with minimal investment. So I'm thinking that of all the Mons on his team, Thunderous might be the Scarfer. He has the Umbreon he had to bring it. I can almost guarantee it's Spideff in order to take on my Gengar. He has the Reuniclus. I really want to scout out what type of set this is because it could be any number of sets. It could be uh, Offensive Trick Room. It could be Calm Mind with two attacks. It could also, if he doesn't think that I'm going to bring in Cinnaror, could very easily be like Calm Mind Acid Armor. And so that's something that I want to... Uh, scout out very early and take out as soon as I can. Mega Metacham, of course, is just a big threat because it is very strong. However, I have four things on my team that outspeed it, and I have Necrozma to be able to take it on. And then also, I uh, he has the Garchomp, which thinking that it is almost 100% going to be a Z-move. Not sure exactly what Z-move it would be, but Z -Gar Garchomp does work against my team, and I don't think he'd want to bring Scarf as... Him being locked into any move is very detrimental. I do have um, Mega Pidgeot to be immune to his Ground Stab. I have Coco to be immune to his Dragon Stab. And I also just have Buzzwell, who, if he's not going for a plus two attack, does not mind anything that Garchomp is going to go for. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking his team is. Uh, looking at my team in the matchup, I'm pretty positive that... Well, I'm just going to go ahead and lead off with Swampert, because I want to get my rocks up ASAP to start pressuring him, start getting a residual chip, especially on things like Thunderous and Marowak, who are very annoying for the team. So yeah, that's what we do. Lead off with the Swampert as he leads off his with his Reuniclus. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to let this thing try to set up immediately. I'm going to go straight into my Necrozma to knock this thing off as quickly as I can. And unfortunately, I take a Toxic. So that is actually really nice for me because it tells me that he is not going to be like set up Reuniclus or he's not going to be dual set up at least. 
This turn I do just go for the knockoff as one thing that was brought up to me as a potential item on Reuniclus was Tangaberry. And so the quicker I can get rid of that thing, the quicker that Buzzwool can be an immediate check to it if it is not running Acid Armor as Adamant Leaf Leech Life does an absolute ton to where I can revenge kill it if it starts to get out of hand. So I go for that as he goes into his Umbreon. Now, Knockoff was a completely zero drawback play right there. If he went into Umbre if he stayed in with Reuniclus, got rid of his item, I could scout out what his item was, and then I could potentially get a better idea of what his set was. But also, if he went into Umbreon like he did, I would get rid of his leftovers, which would make it that much easier to chip down for Gengar to be able to go in later. Because, I mean, in case you hadn't noticed, Gengar really just gets a kill whenever it's in against Medicham, Reuniclus, or Marowak, because Thunderous and Garchomp can't come in on a Specs Gengar Shadow Ball. So the sooner I can get rid of this Umbreon, the better. So I do get rid of its leftovers. That is phenomenal for me. And now at this point, I mean, the Toxic is starting to wear down on me a little bit. I don't want my uh, Where's Nebby to get worn down too much as I am relying on it for Metachamp. So I'm just going to go back into Swampert, take this as an opportunity to get up my rocks again as he goes back into Reuniclus. But now that I have my rocks up, I know that this thing is not as likely to be set up. I'm just going to go for an Earthquake, scout out the damage, and that tells me that that is a bold Re Reuniclus, but, well, not bold Reuniclus. Actually, yeah, I think it's a bold Reuniclus, but it's not maximum invested. It's like, I think I calced it to be somewhere along the lines of max HP and then like a hundred or so defense just to, yeah. So, I mean, it's defensive, but it is not fully defensive, meaning I do have to watch out for a little bit of special defense or special attack investment somewhere along the line. When he went for Psychic right there, that damage told me that he was indeed uh, zero special attack investment. So I'm thinking that he is also going to have a little bit of Spadef in there as well. But now considering that Swampert is important, I'm going to go into my Necrozma, maybe scout out, uh, well actually also predicting the fact that he would go for another Toxic. I mean, the fact that we just traded Earthquake and Psychic right there was kind of a, okay, let's just kind of scout out each other's sets, feel out what type of investment each other has, etc., etc. So I just went for the Earthquake, he went for the Psychic, we got information about each other's sets, and then I thought that, okay, he's going to try to go for a Toxic to wear down my Swampert at this point. I'm going to go into my Necrozma on the Toxic, and then I can also eat a Shadow Ball and go for a knockoff if he wants to. But considering that his Reuniclus is kind of low, my Necrozma is in, I'm just going to take this opportunity to go into my Mega Pidge as I can either take the Shadow Ball, which would be what he'd go for in this situation, or I can deal with any double that he would go for, which he goes into Mega Medicham, which is beautiful for me because even though I will eat a Fake Out, which as you can see will do quite a bit of damage, I'm still able to take that very nicely and then just fire off a Hurricane, which is going to hurt something. So he goes into his Umbreon, and I'm thinking, yes, this will maybe two-hit KO, and I can get rid of that thing. And it does 39% and confuses his Umbreon. Now, I'll be honest, that confusion was very big. I do apologize for that. As with the Calcs, I mean, he we traded uh, teams after the game just to show what each player was, or what each of us was running. And that was a mid to high roll that was like a mid high roll on umbreon with hurricane however he had to have known that i would have been modest based on that damage because otherwise timid would not be able to do that type of damage against umbreon would have been an easy two hit ko and or it would have been an easy three hit ko which would have allowed him to wish up and protect and heal up against my mega pidge however now the umbreon actually with that roll is in range of another high roll hurricane from my Mega Pidge, and he's confused. So knowing that I have a pretty good shot of just getting rid of this Umbreon right here, and if he switches out, that's even better for me, because then my Mega Gengar, or not Mega Gengar, I wish I had Mega Gengar, my Gengar can two-hit KO it with Shadow Ball from there. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm, I am thinking right here, okay, I just need to get rid of this Umbreon if I can. I'm going to fire off another Hurricane because worst case scenario, he wishes up and then it's another turn of potentially having to break through Confusion. So I'm just going to go for that right there as he does switch out into his Thunderous. And this Hurricane, even though Thunderous is a resist, that does almost 50% and I do get a Confusion again, which is unfortunate. But that Hurricane did 46%. Mega Pidge is putting in the work. It's getting Umbreon low to where it can't really switch in on anything anymore. It's gotten Thunderous down 
to where it can only come in on rocks one more time in this game. And I'm also able to threaten out things like Mega Metacham, Reuniclus, stuff like that. So Mega Pidge is already put in, putting in a ton of work, but I don't want it to go down this early. I do have my rocks up. Swamper is kind of low, so it's not really that important to me anymore. So I am just going to go into it. If he predicts my Swamper, then good for him. But I just don't want him to be able to go for a Thunderbolt as he does go for the Volt Switch. I am immune to that. And then right now, if he does have Grass Knot, he's going to go for that. I kind of want to scout it out. I want to keep my Swamper... Uh, I want to keep my Swamper just so he can't spam electric moves later in the game if he is Scarf. I mean, the fact that he went for Volt Switch tell me that there is a very high likelihood that he is going to be a Scarfed Thunderous, which I don't want him to be able to sweep me late game with a Scarfed Thunderbolt. So I'm going to keep it. I mean, Swamper was fairly safe right there. I mean, if he, if he power predicted me, then good on him, but I would think that he'd want to get rid of this Mega Pidgeot as quickly as possible with his Thunderous just because of the immense amount of work it does on his team and also the fact that his Thunderous is limited in its switch-ins now due to the fact that Stealth Rocks are up. So Swampert was a pretty safe play. Now I'm just going to go straight into my Tapu Koko to eat the potential Grass Knot, scout out if this Thunderous can change moves, which he just switches out into Reuniclus, which tells me it's more than likely a Scarf set. But now that my Coco is in on Reuniclus, I'm just going to go for the U-turn. Uh, he brings in his Alolan Marowak, reveals to be Rocky Helmet, but now I get to come in with my Gengar, get a kill, just going to go for the Shadow Ball. He goes for his Umbreon, and this will get two-hit KO'd. Now, it is worth noting that if I had KO'd something like Reuniclus or Marowak, then uh, Umbreon would have been able to come in and wish up against me. But at that point, I was like, you know what? I need to get rid of something. If I get rid of Reuniclus, then that opens the door for... Uh, well, that opens the door for potential just spamming of attacks later in the game it's one less thing to worry about Marowak would open the door for leech life spamming and Tapu Koko spamming really just whatever he sacked off to Gengar at that point would have been a great position for me but he does sack off his Umbreon which means that Gengar is 100% free to click Shadow Ball for the rest of the game and this is going to be awesome he goes into his Garchomp right here, and I know that I can't one-shot it, but I know that Garchomp can only one-shot me with Earthquake or his Z-Move. So I'm going to go into my Necrozma, kind of a middle ground, as he goes for the Devastating Drake. And I actually chew that pretty nicely, all things considered. So, first of all... Uh, Garchomp is going to Garchomp is clearly just Z offensive. I mean, that's kind of what I expected from the beginning. It was Z Dragon, which even though I do have a Tapu Koko, which was guaranteed to come, still I'm not going to switch in a Tapu Koko to Garchomp at this point in the game. I'm just going to make the safe play, go into my Necrozma. As even though the Metacham is still a big threat, I have four things that outspeed it and KO it with a little prior damage. Well, Gengar. Mega Pidge and Tapu Koko KO it with no prior damage. Buzzwool just needs a little bit of prior damage. So, I mean, I have plenty of checks to Mega Medicham. And now that I have KO'd Mon, the Mon trade is in my favor. So, basically, just if we trade Mons from this point, I will end up winning the game just because I'll have the last Mon standing. So, I was willing to sack off my Necrozma just to try to scout out what type of set this Garchomp was. Go for a Photon Geyser, stuff like that. So, now that my Necrozma is in, unfortunately, I'm just going to go into my Buzzwool, scout out the Earthquake if he wanted to go for that just to try to knock me out as I didn't think he would go for Outrage as that devastating Drake damage showed me that he was indeed Z Outrage. I knew that he would not want to go for that to knock out my Necrozma as that just meant the tap Tapu Koko came in and revenge killed the Garchomp very easily. So I figured he'd probably go for Earthquake to try to finish me off. So I went into my Buzzwool as he does set up the rocks. That was a very good play. I mean, I guess he wasn't really afraid as my uh, Necrozma couldn't have one shot it back in return. But I could also have gotten a pretty good amount of damage off with Photon Geyser. But still, rocks was a very good play, which got necessary chip on things like Coco, Gengar and Mega Pidge. So with my Buzzwool in on this Garchomp, I know that there is no one move he can go for that can knock me out in one hit. Even Aerial Ace, I do not believe, will be able to one-shot my Buzzwool at this range. And so I have a choice of moves I can make. I can either go for Earthquake 
predicting the Alolan Marowak coming in and knock that thing out. I can go for Ice Punch to one-shot this Garchomp. I can go for Leech Life, which is just pretty good coverage against his entire team except for the Alolan Marowak. But I do decide that Leech Life is the better play in this situation as it will allow me to two-hit KO this Garchomp. There's nothing he can do to one-hit KO me in return, even Aerial Ace. So I'm really just thinking that a good old-fashioned Leech Life will be able to two-hit KO the Garchomp. I'll get a Beast Boost, whatever he goes in to, uh, besides the Alolan Marowak, it will be able to two-hit KO at the very least. And if he wants to bring in Alolan Marowak, well, that's just one more turn of rocks that it takes and a little bit of damage from an adamant leech life. So that's just what I'm going to go for right there as he does pull the switch into Alolan Whack. But now at this point, it is so low, it can't come in on anything anymore. I mean, it will take 25% from rocks, and that's, I mean, that's pretty much good for me. So I'm going to go into my Necrozma, sack it off right there, as he does make a very nice double, goes into his Mega Metacham, and I was like, okay, he'll just knock me out with like a fake out, but no. He goes for the power up punch, and at this point, I was like scrambling. I was like, ah, oh, crap, I'm screwed. Uh, let's, let's calc really quickly, see what type of Mega Metacham this is, because at first I was like, oh, okay, he's just going to be... He's just going to be jolly. I mean, that that looked like jolly damage on Mega Pidge. But once I saw the power-up punch, I was like, oh, crap. What if this is adamant? What if I had just calc wrong? So I'm like scrambling, calcing on my Tapu Koko, on my Gengar, on my Mega Pidgeot. What uh, damage a what damage a plus one bullet punch could do. And so none of my mons were in range right there, but I was like, okay, what about a crit? Me okay, Mega Pidge is actually in range of it, so I can't go into Mega Pidge. Uh, Tapu Koko is very close to being in range of a crit. Buzzwool cannot one hit KO it in return with Leech Life. Um, so what am I gonna do right here? I ultimately decided that Gengar, well, first of all, Gengar was not in range. And if it was in range of a crit, it would have to be a high roll crit at this point, but Gengar, uh, was Gengar was probably the most expend actually Gengar is in range of a crit if he gets a crit on my Gengar then my Gengar just goes down um, oops but either way I figured that Gengar was the most likely to be able to live a bullet punch as Buzzwell I just need a little bit more damage on this Mega Metacham and quite frankly if he gets enough crits he can just win the game from here so I really didn't want that to happen so I was just like okay I'll go into Gengar, maybe maybe he won't want to risk Mega Metacham this early, and then maybe I can scare it out and get a KO on something with Shadow Ball. So I was kind of like, ah, screw it, I just have to go for it and pray that he doesn't double crit me to win the game. So I just send in my Gengar, I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball, as he does sack off his Alolan Marowak, which is beautiful for me, meaning that Tapu Koko can now just spam Dazzling Gleam's Thunderbolt for the rest of the game, and Buzzwool is more freed up as well, as he goes into his Garchomp once again. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, he has to go for the Earthquake in order to knock out my Gengar. He can go for the Outrage to try to knock me out. But at that point, once again, Tapu Koko just easily comes in and revenge kills his Garchomp. And I feel like he really would like to have Garchomp in the late game in order to be able to, in order to, be able to try to come back. And so, because he has to go for Earthquake... I'm thinking that Buzzwool is a very, very safe play because, again, he's not going to go for Outrage. There is That is a relatively poor play in this situation as it does just essentially lose him his Garchomp without potentially getting a knockout on something. So I am just going to stay in, go for a Shadow Ball. If he does stay in, good on him. He got me. But at that point, Garchomp will be low enough that a Leech Life will be able to finish it off. And I can potentially just sweep the game from here with Buzzwool, just going for Leech Life, getting Beast Boost, and then going from there. I think I should be able to KO the Reuniclus, even if it is Tanga Berry at plus one with an adamant Leech Life. So, I mean, that's just kind of what I'm going to go for. going to stay in, go for a Shadow Ball, as he does switch into his Reuniclus, predicting my Buzzwell. Turned out he was Tanga Berry, and that was also kind of the play that I was predicting. I was like, okay, he has to make some type of crazy play in order to try to get back in the game at this point. And I really just had a feeling that that turn was the turn that he was going to go for it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay in. I'm going to go for a Spec Shadow Ball. If he tries to switch in on something, uh, predicting that I will switch my Gengar out, then I will get a kill. And luckily for me, he does go into his Reuniclus, and I do uh, knock that thing out with a Spec Shadow Ball. But like I said, 
at that point, I was even willing to sack off my Gengar in in uh, exchange for a good amount of damage off on Garchomp to where Mega Pidge could come in and just Hurricane Spam. So yeah, able to catch the Reuniclus with a Shadow Ball that is great. That means that my Buzzle is that much closer to being able to clean up the game. So he goes back into his Garchomp. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, he's not messing around. Uh, Gengar is too big of a threat at this point. He's gonna knock this thing out once again. No, he's probably not going to go for Outrage, so he's going to go for Earthquake to guaranteed get the knockout on me. I'm just going to make the switch into my Mega Pidge. If he wanted to go for Outrage on that turn, then Mega Pidge got knocked out, but that gave me a free switch into my Tapu Koko, and then I could Dazzling Gleam. So really, it was just a no-drawback play going into my Mega Pidgeot at that point, just because, I mean, like I said, covered everything that I really needed it to cover, and I got out of the situation what I needed it to. As he does go for the Earthquake, and at this point, I'm just going to get some damage off of Garchomp just get it in range of everything go for the hurricane doesn't quite knock it out as he does lock himself into outrage and knocks out my mega pidgeot so now i have a i have a little situation i have a number of things i can go to i have three different things that can come in and knock out the garchomp before it gets off another hit i can go into my tapu coco i can go into my gengar or i can go into my buzzwool now tapu coco and gengar i need to be somewhat careful with as both of them are potentially in range of crit bullet punches like it in the right situation if i let them get chipped down too much by rocks then they're in range of crit bullet punches so i could bring both of those in to revenge kill the scar chomp but i don't want either of them to take rocks in this particular situation so i'm really just kind of on the fence about what I want to do. So I do ultimately decide to just go into my Buzzwool, get my plus one with Leech Life, which guaranteed allows me to knock out a Mega Metacham, well, unless he's very bulky, but pretty much guarantees me the knockout on Mega Metacham with a plus one Leech Life, forces in the Thunderous, so it has to, if it's Scarf, it has to lock itself into something. If it's not Scarf, then Buzzwool just clean sweeps from here. So basically I'm just forcing the Thunderous in on my buzzwool so that it has to pick a move to lock itself into and if it can't just lock itself into a move if it's not choice scarf like i said my buzzwool will outspeed and i will win the game so i'm just sending in my buzzwool going for the leech life gets me a little bit of damage i mean i take more from rough skin but the important thing is i am forcing in the thunderous so that it can't come in later in the game uh this is its last turn in and i'm just gonna stay in go for the leech life if i outspeed i win but he is scarf thunder so shout outs to omega jolteon for predicting that one goes for the hp flying knocks out my buzzwool and now i pretty much win the game because thunderous is locked into hp flying my tapu coco is designed to take on thunderous i do have uh Two things that outspeed the Mega Metacham and knock it out to win the game. So, yeah, I'm in a great position. So what I'm going to do right here is, knowing that Gengar is out of range of a crit bullet punch from Mega Metacham, even after just one round of rocks, I'm going to go into my Tapu Koko. What I should have done right here, actually, is roosted off the damage from the HP flying to keep Tapu Koko out of range of a crit bullet punch. But I was just kind of... I don't know. I was just kind of like, okay, end game is in sight. I have I have the guaranteed win. As like I said, Gengar is out of range of a crit. So I was just kind of playing it. I was just kind of like, okay, and end game's here. Let's just get this over with. Let's, let's just finish the game. But what I should have done is taken the HP flying, roosted up, taken another one, and then knocked out the Thunderous, knowing that Tapu Koko would then be out of range of a crit bullet punch as well. But what I end up doing is just taking the HP flying, going for U-turn, knocking out the Thunderous, and then I will just go into my Gengar, knowing that, like I said, out of range of the crit BP, and he can't even try to fake me out for extra damage. So I will be able to finish this game off with a spec Shadow Ball after I live the bullet punch. So... Yeah, live that. Even a crit would not have knocked me out, and uh, we are able to take out the Mega Metacham with a Shadow Ball for a 3-0 victory. Gengar came through very, very clutch. Well, not necessarily clutch. Gengar had just put in the work in this game, getting four kills. I mean, that was... Really, Mega Pidge was actually the MVP, in my opinion, just because even though it didn't get a single kill, wore down Umbreon to where... Gengar was able to take it out with two spec shadow balls it wore down thunderous to where it was only able to come in on rocks one more time in that game it wore down Garchomp to where I could just go for any attack in order to finish it off so I didn't have to get extra rocks damage on one of my mons to try to potentially win the game at that point it scared out Mega Metacham and yeah I mean Alolan Alolan Mega Pidgeot 
was incredible in this game and unfortunately didn't get to get a kill but it got off all the damage that i really needed in order to get in a winning situation so good job mega pidge but uh yeah great game to blake i mean that team was very scary he prepped very well and uh, hope i don't have to face him again because he is a very good player but at the same time if we do face in playoffs, I know that it's going to be one heck of a game. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.